Hey guys, this is Zap Productions here. I am Zion, the oldest member of Zap Productions, and I will be showing you today how to make the best settings in iStop Motion. So, as you can see, I have this open project in iStop Motion, and it is called uh, Lego the Ninja. And you might be wondering uh, why am I working on this, and why haven't I been working on the the movies for the trailers and like Black Panther versus Quicksilver and stuff like that. I am working on it, but for now I got creative and I wanted to make this little short. So let me show you it. So it's this is just a tiny part of it. I hope you liked it. It's just a tiny sneak peek. But, uh, so, let's get back into track. So, I have, uh, I have a webcam attached to the computer, and it's giving me a live view. Now, if you do not have live view on your camera in iStop Motion, then I cannot help you. This is only for cameras that have live view on iStop Motion. And we use a webcam, so I am going to show you the live view. This is the picture that's live view. So as you can see, I'm moving the camera, uh, the webcam around. So you see as it's shaking. <coughs> so what I want to show you is how to make the the best settings when when animating with you know the with the scene, the characters, and, and tips that will help you improve in your uh, brick film. So, the main concepts here, and the main uh, tools that I've used in my experience in iStop Motion are blinking, onion skinning, and overlay. So, I'll start with overlay, because it's pretty simple. Overlay is basically, if you have live view, it will show you the recent, the most recent picture that you've taken with, in comparison to the live view that you have. So right here, it, as you can see as I'm changing the lever down here, you can see the difference between the pictures. So now to blinking basically let's if i'm going to click it here so check and basically as you can see it switches between the most recent picture and the live view so it's pretty useful especially when you're you, as you can see these these pictures are extremely different but i've only done this to explain to you to help just to just for this video but let me stop this as you can see on these and these older ones you can see how the pictures are pretty much the same when I'm using this so to help me make it like tippity top perfect I don't know why I use that word but uh, to help me make it perfect and, uh, you know, measuring the distance and the, and the time, I used blinking, onion skinning, and overlays to help me with that. So, if you mix blinking, as you can see here, blinking, and then you turn on onion skinning, It will show you the most recent picture, as you can see here, wait. It will show you the most recent picture, and then it will show you the, ne the next live view picture. And what it does is that it makes it a bit faded so that you can see the old one and the new one at the same time. So you can, like, you can, uh, 
tell how much, like, what's the difference between the pictures to make it just perfect. And right now it looks pretty bad because, uh, like I said, the pictures are so different. And, uh, but for these, let me show you. For these older, ugh, let me stop this for a sec. As you see, for these older ones, you can see how the last picture, how the difference between the two pictures, and it really helps in the movement and such. So, if you s mix the blinking with the onion skinning, I think that is the best thing you can do, because not only do you see between pictures, oh, and uh, I forgot to mention, if you have blinking and onion skinning on, and it sees that, it, like, it shows that there's no overlay, there's no, like, faded pictures and pictures and pictures or something like that, then you gotta check your overlay, because this is the key. As you can see here, now it's right. And, um, so, that is basically the the setting that I, in my opinion, is very, very good for this. So, um, when you're making your brick film, if you have eye stop motion and live view, when you're making your brick film, I s recommend this setting because not only it, not only does it help it like tell the difference, also it also helps with the light flickering because some on some frames there might be a light flicker and if you wait for it to blink again it might not be there so you can wait for the picture to be perfect and then you can take the picture as you can see let me just show you as you can see I took a picture of this and let me say I moved them if I moved them you can see the old picture from the new picture, as you can see. The old one and the new one. And sometimes if there's like a, maybe a, a shadow or a light flicker, there might be a, like a bit of a problem. You could always wait for it, the camera to work itself out and then it would, just to make sure it looks perfect, as you can see here. And I take the next picture. And so you can tell between the pictures. And now it's basically, now, right now, it's blinking. But the pictures, the last picture from the most recent picture, I mean, the last picture from the live view picture are so equal that it has barely, um, barely any difference, you can see. So let's say if I move this a bit, you can see how it's changing now so that's it I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'm glad I could do these how-to videos uh, I would like to do more so I hope you enjoyed and I hope it helps you in tips for your movie making your brick filming and uh, Oh yes, one more thing. Uh, if you don't know how to use I stop motion well, you would probably start out like this. But if you want to get to the blinking and onion skinning, all you can do is press this little tab down here. Compositing, I'll probably do a whole nother how-to video there. So that's it. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope this helps. See you later.